Hi, welcome to uh, Frank's Scroll Saw Shop. I don't know what else to call it. I have a scroll saw in my garage and I want to demonstrate a small project I just completed. It's this thing right here. It's a little windmill on a plaque. I cut out the pieces from a template, finished it, assembled it on this plaque that I cut out and shaped and sanded, and uh, that was about it. Didn't take too long and you might find it interesting and if you're into scroll sawing, maybe it'll give you an idea. Or if you see something I'm doing wrong I can do better, feel free to email me on my website and uh, we'll take it from there. Stick around. It won't take long. Just a few minutes you'll see the whole thing from beginning to end. Okay, I've got my pieces on the board. It looks like everything will fit on this one piece of wood. The uh, sails, or whatever we call these things, won't fit like this, so I had to angle them, and even then it's going to have to be very tight to get them on there so it all works. And on the other pieces, it's just a matter of getting them to fit. I'm playing with the grain a little bit to maybe see if I can get some type of wave effect, maybe going through the clouds with the grain. There's an interesting pattern of wood down here that I'm going to use for the main body of the windmill. So we're going to start with the sail because that's the most difficult piece. And it's got all these little cuts in it. And when we get done, it's going to be a very weak piece of wood because there's a cut that runs right along the length of one of the shafts. And then you have all these little cuts here. It's a lot of opportunity for this thing to get broken. And if I break it and ruin it, I'd rather do it right away up front rather than get all this other stuff done and then have that as a mess. So we'll start with that and then we'll slowly do the others as we go along. Okay, we're going to get started. What I'm going to do is I'm going to glue this, fasten it to this piece of wood, and then uh, I'll be all set to start cutting. For the uh, initial cut, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this out and make a smaller piece so I don't have this big clunky part. Uh, in the middle of my work. Okay, finished cutting that board. And now we're going to uh, change out the blades. I'm going to use a number three Olsen scroll saw blade. It gives me a little bit more control and I like the style of the cut better than the larger number five, which kind of cut through like butter because they're such highly refined edges. Well, let me get this on, we'll get started. You just cut along the black line as carefully as you can. Sometimes, interestingly enough, the wood, uh, if you push a little too hard, you'll tend to push the blade back away from you. And when you do that, you need to stop for just a second when you get to a, where you need to turn and let it catch up. Otherwise, it'll go past where you want it to be. If you're careful, you can turn these very precisely on a turn. Okay, well, I'm just going to continue. We'll pick up with you later after I get this all cut out, and then I'll show you how we're going to do these parts here. Okay, we've jumped ahead a little bit. I'm about done with cutting this out.
touch gets a little wide, you got to back up and work it down until it gets close to where you need it to be. Okay. So now I've got the um, sail cut out for the windmill. Now I have to cut these individual parts out here so that when the paper comes off you can see that same effect. I like to hold these down firmly with my hand to minimize any movement because these little pieces can break very easily. And if they break, you can ruin your project. Or you have to cut a new piece. That's why I like to do these, the hardest parts first. Because if I decide the project's too much hassle, I'd rather find out early than after I've already done all the easy parts. But you can just cut these out nice and carefully. You don't want to go too far because, like I said, you still got that long one you got to do. That, when you get these all done, and you got to cut right along where they are, and you want to make sure you don't overcut a hole or a place you already cut. You can see this will be a very weak structure once it's all done. That's what I call an engineer's nightmare. Engineers like everything to be strong and solid. And these scroll saw, scroll saw projects are anything but solid. This little black thing sprays air from the, has a little pump inside here that shoots air. At lower speeds it doesn't work so well, but it works well enough. You just got to get it in the right spot. But you tend to collect all this little fine sawdust as you're cutting, and it piles up. And you lose sight of your blade, and you don't want to lose sight of your blade in this business. Okay, so we just keep doing this through all four blades. And once we get done, we'll get back and then we'll do one of these together. I'm going to slow the speed down just a little bit. Get the air blower just so it keeps that away. I want to be very precise here. I'm also holding it down extra firmly to make sure there's no wiggle. So this starts jumping around, then pieces start breaking off. And I guess I can speed it up a little bit. All right, now that I've finished the length, I gotta back it out. You can see how weak all that is. There's just very little wood holding all this together. This thing becomes very delicate. I had another machine before this and I was working on a similar project and my other machine is uh, a lower end model it costs like 90 bucks it did a lot of good work but the problem was when I did things like this they tended to break and I don't know whether it's a function of my experience or also a function of the quality of the machine I think it's probably some of both but a lot of the machine makes a difference the head on this uh, DeWalt cuts very precision up and down, very precisely up and down. And I seem to have a lot more control. Okay, that's that one. Oop. Next.